Uh, today, my name is David Rezai. If you have questions after today about the design program, there's my contact info. Please email me after today. We don't have to stop the conversation after today's workshop. Uh, so a little bit of the agenda for today, you're going to learn a bit, a little bit about our School of Design and Creative Technologies, which is one of the departments and schools here within the College of Fine Arts. Specifically, we're mostly going to talk about the Bachelor of uh, Arts and Bachelor of Fine Arts in Design today. So if you have plans to apply to that program, this will be a great session for you. Um, but either way, it might be interesting for you to check out, even if you're wanting to apply to a different program. So we're going to talk about SDCT, School Design and Creative Tech. We're going to talk about the design major and how do you apply to it. And we're also going to do a creative sketching exercise to explore your creative interest, to see what you're interested in, how your mind works with creative, and how you might use that in applying to the program. And then also plenty of time for Q&A. So drop your questions in the chat throughout. I'll be kind of monitoring it. We'll also have time throughout the workshops for you to ask your questions. So um, that's just a little bit of what the next hour is going to look like. All right, so some of this may be new for you. Some of y'all may already know about the School of Design and Creative Tech, depending on if you've come to our sessions previously. Uh, but the School of Design and Creative Technologies is actually one of the newest schools and departments here within the College of Fine Arts. It started back in 2017. Um, and really, the program was created by industry professionals across de design and creative tech industries so that we could offer a curriculum to students that represents industry skills and also employ students in jobs uh, in companies that are really looking to hire students who know how to use design skills, who know how to use creative technology skills, um, whether that's um, in government, entertainment, nonprofit, government, the arts, any of these fields. We believe that these skills can be taught and used in any field um, wherever you're going in your career. So I think it's a really great program. Happy to talk about it today. But we have two different departments. Again, today I'm mostly fo focusing on the Department of Design and students looking to apply to our BA or BFA in design program. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, if you are applying to one of the other programs, there might be some different requirements. But for this program, the Arts Center, I mean, for the design BA, BFA, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so really quickly, though, if you were interested in arts and entertainment technologies, I did just want, briefly want to mention it because a lot of times uh, students are interested in both programs. Uh, but just a little information about arts and entertainment technologies or AET uh, is that um, it's a Bachelor of Science program and it really covers a lot of different creative technology areas, which include anything from game design, themed entertainment, motion graphics and video, immersive media, interactive storytelling, how music and sound can fit into all these different fields. So if you're really interested in the creative technology side uh, of, our pro, uh, of our department, then you definitely wanna look at the Bachelor of Science in Arts and Entertainment Technologies. We'll talk more about that program at tomorrow's session called Inside AET, Exploring Themed Entertainment Design. So definitely register for that if you're interested in learning more about arts and entertainment technologies as well. But today we're mostly gonna focus on our design program. So I'm gonna jump over to that. So if you're on the call today, you may have creative interests. You may wanna be a designer. You might have your own ideas of what design is or what you wanna do with it, but you also might be looking to explore and see what areas you wanna pursue in design. The cool thing about our design program is that we, it's a very interdisciplinary program covering uh, multiple areas of design. So if you wanna study graphic design, you're gonna get exposed to that in our program. If you wanna study interaction design, which is basically how people interact with screens or digital objects or spaces. So think apps, Zoom, right? We're all interacting over this. You interact over Facebook and social media. All those interactions are actually designed by designers, people who do user experience design or user interface design. How does the app work? How does the app look like? All those things are designed uh, by interaction designers. So you also get exposed to those fields. Uh, and then industrial design. So if you ever wanna be a 3D product designer or an industrial designer, you also will get 3D product design and industrial design skills from our program. So a lot of times students come to the program being like, I wanna be a graphic designer, do you have that? Uh, do I wanna be a product designer, do you have that? Cool thing is we teach all of that in one degree, which is really, really exciting. So you'll be a well-rounded designer, but you'll also get the ability to specialize based off the electives you choose as you move through the program. We do have two different uh, tracks in our design degree, the Bachelor of Arts track and the Bachelor of Fine Arts track. Uh, basic difference, you'll hear this a lot for the other fine arts programs as well, is that the Bachelor of Arts track is a little bit more flexible and, uh, and it has a more outside electives. So you can maybe double major or pick up multiple minors and certificates or have some freedom to explore outside of taking mostly design classes. The BFA program, a little bit more specialized into the design. So about two thirds of the classes you'll take across your four years will be design specific studio classes if you're doing the BFA. BFA students also are required to do an internship before they graduate. 
BFA students also present their final senior capstone project in an exhibition in the Visual Arts Center. So that exhibition piece is one extra requirement that BFA students do. Uh, but the BA students um, take the same introductory design courses as BFA students in your first three semesters. So you're still gonna learn across all these different areas of design. You just take less upper division studio electives uh, at, throughout your four years. So again, if you want a double major, have more flexibility, the BA design track might be great for you. If you want to specialize in design and really get a solid foundation in design, then maybe the Bachelor of Fine Arts program might be more specialized and interesting to you. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about which one you might want to apply for when you're applying to the program. So I did want to pause for questions. I know that was just a little overview of the School Design and Creative Tech. The next step we're going to jump into is talking about how you go about applying to the design program. But I want to see if there's any questions in the chat. So let's see. Nope, just a lot of people introducing themselves. I love it. So if you have more questions, please drop them in the chat, but we'll have more. I'm going to basically pause throughout this presentation to look for questions. Okay, so you're interested in design, right? You maybe want to be a product designer, interaction designer, graphic designer, um, want to see how you can use your creative skills in these industries. So you want to apply to our program. Um, you'll do the UT application, but there's also an extra step, and we're going to talk about that today. So in general, design, right, is really used in all forms. You see it everywhere, right? Chairs, furniture, websites, logos, anything we interact with, right, is designed in some way. Um, everything's designed. And so in that, we're looking for all different types of students to apply to our program. You don't necessarily have to come from any specific background or have any specific experience necessarily to be a good fit for our program because we think all different types of students and creatives can be great designers. So as you can see these photos here, actually that um, photo at the top is a, a chair prototype that one of our students did in one of our 3D design classes. And that little gift down there is actually um, a zine publication that a lot of our uh, graduating seniors about two years ago did uh, with AIGA, the design magazine. Uh, and they actually created this zine called um, things that you don't learn in design school. So again, more on the graphic design side, but again, there's all different types of design, all different types of designers. And the part of today is kind of figure out what areas do you want to kind of go into and how you want to go about exploring your design creativity. But right before everything's designed, you're going to have to take a step back and you have to see the thinking process, the thought process, the planning process of how you go about designing, right? Um, it's not always about your final product. You can make a really cool looking thing, but um, who are you designing for? How is it used? Is it an accessible thing to use? Um, do people understand how to use it? Is the information you're trying to convey getting out there? All those happen in the research and um, prototyping phase when you're working on design. And so the process for coming up with your designs is almost as equally important as your final finished product as a designer. And so with that, in our, uh, in, uh, when you're applying to our program, we ask students to do a creative design prompt, which is kind of an open-ended challenge for you to showcase some of those skills, um, a little bit in how you think and create, but also what you can create. So I'll talk a little bit about that in these next few slides. So you're looking to apply to the BA, BFA design major. Right, um, you actually will submit your UT application, right? Every student submitting the, the, the general UT application, which has those general UT requirements. You'll wanna make sure to choose design BA or BFA as your first choice major. Uh, but then in addition, before the deadline, you're gonna wanna actually submit um, your response to our creative design prompt, which is actually listed on our website. Uh, there's a lot of great resources there, but I'll talk a little bit about it. Essentially what this is, is an open-ended um, creative challenge for you to showcase your creativity uh, and how you think as a creative. Um, if you're applying as a freshman, this is something that you will need to do before the deadline to submit your uh, application to UT to be considered for our program. So first step, right, submit your UT application. Make sure that you've uh, either gone on Apply Texas or the Coalition for College app and you're applying to UT for the fall 2022 semester if you're a current senior or transfer student. And make sure you select design as your first choice major. Uh, but then um, you want to make sure to do your creative design prompts. And essentially what our creative design prompt is, is um, we give you a list of themes. You can choose one of those themes. That's going to be kind of uh, the theme of your uh, final work or project that you create. And using that, you're going to create a final work or a new project inspired by that prompt with the theme that you selected. It can be in any medium, any format. Um, we have a whole list of file format types listed on our website, so you can know how you submit it. But essentially, you'll upload that final piece of work or project that you created inspired by the prompt. In addition to that, you'll also upload a behind the scenes video essay, uh, basically a one minute or less short video for you to talk about and explain and showcase how and why you made what you did. 
So again, we're going to talk about each of those um, sections. I'm going to get into the behind the scenes video essay in a little bit. Um, but again, going back to what I said earlier, when you're designing, it's not just about your final product. It's also what the steps you took to get there. How did you understand what you were doing? What was your goal? Did you run into any issues? Did you have early uh, versions of a, of a certain design logo or project that you created, but decide to go in a different direction? We want to know about all those steps in your behind the scenes video essay. So you'll upload these two things um, in our portal on our website, um, in addition to submitting your UT application. If you're a transfer student on the call, you will also do this creative design prompt as well, but you also can submit up to five additional examples of your work, and that can be from any medium as well. So just keep that in mind. If you are a transfer student wanting to apply, you're already at a community college or another college and you want to apply to as a transfer student to our design program, you'll do the creative design prompt and also submit um, your um, additional uh, design work samples uh, to showcase your other design skills. But for freshmen, you're just doing the creative design prompt and your UT application. So again, a key aspect of the prompt, it's very open-ended. Um, the point of today's workshop is for you to start thinking about how you work as a creative and how you might go about showcasing that and what you submit for the creative design prompt requirement. So again, we really value where you're coming from, your perspectives, your ideas. You want to be able to showcase that um, in whatever you showcase and whatever you submit for the prompt to really show us who you are, how you think, and how you like to create. Also, do it in a way that's accessible to you. You don't have to have certain softwares. You don't have to have certain material. Whatever you have around you, whatever way you want to create, do that in a way that makes sense for you and what you have around you. So really quickly, I would love for y'all to take a second uh, to just either jot down or even you can even type it in the chat, uh, different ways that you like to express your creativity. So um, I'd love to know whether you're interested in music, fashion, art, you like building things, you like tearing things apart. Maybe you like uh, to experiment with photography or video, um, or maybe you're more of a STEM oriented problem solver or you like math um, or any of those kind of things. Um, kind of take a couple seconds to write down what you um, are, what kind of creative you are and how you express your creativity already, because y'all are already um, expressing your creativity in different ways, right? Um, so I'd love to see some, uh, some chat uh, about what are the different ways y'all express your creativity. So please type in the chat some of the different ways that you express your creativity, um, and I'd love to see that. Cool. So Lauren says digital art and animation. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely a lot of skills going on there. I'm gonna see if anybody else adds the chat. Music performance, okay, Jesus, I like that. Reigns of they like cake decorating. I love that uh, and building things a lot um, and digital art. Actually, we had someone submit a creative design prompt submission last year that was a map of UT made of made of cookies. So Rain, um, love to see that that, that cookie uh, baking expertise. Uh, Nassim said studio art, video editing, love that, jazz, um, photography, music, and graphic design, fashion, graphic design, James likes singing songs to his baby boy, oh, that's really cute, and the tuba, shout out to the tuba, uh, Caroline loves just about everything, sculpture, pottery, sewing, 3D printing, graphic design, and cooking. Cool. I love all these different things. The cool thing about this is, like, again, with this creative design prompt response, you have a lot of freedom to showcase your creativity in a way that you want to showcase. And it could be in any medium, which means all these things that you listed, potentially, you could use that as the medium that you showcase your creativity, right? So just keep those thinking in your head. I'm glad y'all shared those with me. And we're going to keep uh, kind of moving on. But love uh, that we have such different interests on the call tonight. And in reality, that's what we're looking for in our design program. A lot of different types of creatives with different design interests. Okay, so our next section, we're going to talk a little bit about creativity and design, kind of how creativity flows into design and sit, figuring out what kind of creative you are. So um, really quick, I'm going to do a couple questions, but in our design program, we really think that um, it's, we have room for all creative types. Again, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and I want to see how y'all answer this. It'll be polls, so you should see them pop up pretty soon. So the first question I have is, would you describe yourself as artistic? Um, so let me go ahead and share, oh, not that, one second. Polls, oh, let me admit that person too. Okay, launch, cool. Now you should see the poll pop up. So do you consider yourself artistic? Yes, no, or I'm not sure. It's not a trick question. Answer however you feel, describe yourself. Okay, interesting results. I know y'all can't see them yet, but um, I'll share them in a second. Okay, it looks like most people have done it. I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. 
Okay, interesting. We've done this workshop before and we get a lot of different results, but it looks like almost everyone on the call considers themselves artistic. But there was one person that says they're not, I'm not sure. And you know what? To that one person, I actually would consider myself in that camp too. Um, I probably would have answered, I'm not sure. Um, so that's an interesting uh, uh, kind of example to see where you all are at. So now I'm going to ask another question. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to ask one more poll. Okay, so do you consider yourself creative? That's my next question to y'all. Oh, interesting. Oh, this one's getting a lot more interesting answers. Okay, this is really interesting. I'll share it in a second. Oh, thanks, James, for saying I had the soul of a creative artist. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Okay, cool. So I think most people answered. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and share the results. Awesome. Okay, so as you can see, interesting split here. About 11 students today out of 20 said yes. They consider themselves creative. We got one student who said no. And then eight students who said I'm not sure. And I think that's really interesting. And the point I want to make here really is that our design program is not necessarily just looking for artists. We're looking for students who are creative. That could show up in a lot of different ways. Um, so the reason we're doing the creative design prompt again is that we're not just looking for students that are maybe coming from an art background or consider themselves artists. We definitely have those students in our program and we welcome them to join and apply. But we also are looking for those students who might consider themselves creative in other ways. Maybe um, they're really great at making things. Maybe they're really great at problem solving or understanding people and being empathetic and how to use that to create new solutions for things or new processes for things. So those are the kind of things we're looking at um, in, in for students. And so, and there's also different ways to be creative. So that's how we're gonna go into this next section here. Let me skip forward. Okay, so there's actually different uh, dimensions of creativity. And there's one exercise we're going to do today as a group um, that you, you can kind of showcase and see what kind of creative you are in just three minutes. So we're going to test it out. Um, so um, let's go ahead. So if you have something, if you please can grab something to draw with, a pen, pencil, paper, whatever you have, if you have some scrap piece of paper, I think I emailed this out to a few folks either. So if you printed out this photo, uh, this picture, uh, this 30 circles, uh, Piece of paper, great. If not, you can actually recreate it. So what I want you to do in the next uh, minute or so is actually recreate this, uh, basically what you see here on this sheet of paper. It's basically 30 identical circles. So five across, six down. If you really quickly in the next minute could create these uh, 30 circles on a piece of paper. Um, I'll give you all a minute or so to do that. Um, and if you could, once you're ready, if you could just say ready in the chat and I'll start seeing maybe a bunch of readies and then I'll know we can kind of move forward. Um, but really quickly, if you could just recreate these 30 circles on your sheet of paper. Cool, we got some readies. Love it, love it. I'm gonna keep waiting a little bit because I wanna before. And again, don't get ahead of yourself. You may already see what the directions are, but don't start yet. We're gonna time you. So, okay. Good, a lot of folks are ready. And again, if they're not perfect circles, that's totally cool too. I definitely can't draw perfect circles without the help of uh, some type of uh, tool uh, or digital um, tool. Okay, seems like most folks are ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If you're not ready, it's okay. You can, you know, you can spend some of the three minutes to catch up, no worries. Isn't supposed to be stressful. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna give you all three minutes. And in those three minutes, what I want you to do is actually to draw in these circles um, once the timer starts. You have three minutes to turn the circles into drawings. Whatever that means to you, you have three minutes to do this. So you'll basically turn all 30 circles um, into drawings in whatever way makes sense to you for three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the timer and then I'm also gonna play some music so that um, y'all can chill and sketch for three minutes and then we'll kind of come back together as a group and talk about what y'all did. So let me pull up the timer on my phone. Okay. Three, two, one, three minutes starts. So go ahead and start sketching everybody. And I'm gonna also play some music. Let me know if you can't hear it, but I think you should be able to hear it. Also let y'all know when you have like one minute or 30 seconds left.
Let me unmute myself first. Y'all have one minute left, one minute. About 20 seconds left. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so pencils down, pens down. You want to stop my alarm? Cool. All right, let me pause this music too. Okay. Awesome. So now we're going to talk a little bit about and see what y'all did. So I would love it if y'all could, if you feel comfortable and you want to, un, uh, you know, turn on your camera, I'd love to see y'all hold up kind of the different circles that you did. I kind of want to see what's going on. Oh, whoa, Chloe automatically see so many different things going on. Okay. Lauren. Interesting. Rain. Love it. Sarah. Okay. Okay. See a bunch of faces there. All right, let me see if anybody else is getting on here to showcase theirs. Okay, and no worries if you don't want to show yours over the camera, that's totally good too. Chop is a great show. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, Anna, okay, interesting. Okay, I love it. There's a lot of variety. Sarah, okay, uh, yes, yours too. Awesome. Okay, y'all can go ahead and put that down too. Uh, let me actually unpin that. Mm, okay. Cool, so now we're gonna talk about, based off what you drew, maybe what kind of creative you are and what you did um, and what that tells you about your creativity and how your mind works in those short three minutes. So let's get through. So again, this is basically kind of a similar exercise to doing the creative design prompt in that it's really open-ended, right? It was a simple ask. You could go about it in a lot of different ways um, and there's more than one way to do it, right? There's no one right answer. So with that, I kind of wanna break it down a little bit. So if you, in your circles, you generated a, maybe a variety of different interpretations, kind of like the, that you can see here, right? Someone did different, like a clock, a pizza, um, a candy cane. That might showcase that your creativity in your mind is more likely to um, think openly and flexibly. You might be able to think uh, about different things in different ways in a very quick amount of time. Um, so again, just more examples of that. Maybe if you did this, I saw some folks do this, and this is definitely my way of creativity, uh, is if you generate a variety of different interpretations uh, within a specific category. So maybe you noticed that a lot of your drawings were in the same category, whether it's smiley faces or um, faces of the moon um, or things like that, uh, then that really showcases that you have a creative ability to think efficiently or repeatable patterns. So maybe, right, you're really good about taking one idea and coming up with a lot of different versions of it in a very quick amount of time. Or maybe, and I saw a couple of folks who did this, you really focused um, on really just focusing on a few of your circles and making them more highly detailed in your drawings, which means you're really good about being detail oriented and you can also really focus in on specific ideas. Um, so again, if you really need to flesh out one specific idea, you might have that creative talent to be able to do that as a designer. And then and I saw some folks do this. Maybe if you actually combined your circles, went outside the, the lines, created different shapes uh, and um, I, uh, products or images outside of the circles, then your creative ability might be looking more about finding unique or innovative ways to look at something or innovative solutions to ideas. So I know there were a couple of folks who had versions of this I saw on their screen. So really quickly, um, I do kind of want to figure out um, what kind of um, areas y'all saw. Um, and what that as a group, um, what were people more likely on one side or the other? So with that, again, I'm going to kind of break through this. If you had an open or flexible drawings, right? Maybe you drove a, a lot of different um, types of different things. Um, you might be really great on a design team uh, for someone who needs to come up with as many ideas as possible. So you may be on a design team being like, okay, we need to actually think of as as many different ideas as we can in a short amount of time, and then we'll go from there and seeing which ones work. Right? So that might be a creative design skill that you have. Um, maybe if you're efficient or repeatable, maybe, maybe you did all these smiley faces or phases of the moon, those types of ideas or images, then you're really good at creating different variations of one particular idea or theme. So that idea, you know, maybe you're working for a company and you're creating a branding logo, right? And they're like, we actually need a lot of variations that have these three colors that convey this different idea. We wanna see kind of different designs that all relate to that concept. 
right? Or maybe a particular product. Um, so maybe um, you are bring that skill to the table as a designer. Or maybe you're really detailed and specific, uh, which means uh, you might actually be really great on a design team of uh, making an idea into reality. Basically turning an idea or a really kind of sketch um, product or an early iteration of a product and taking it fully fleshed out um, to fully visualize it right to folks that you're working with. So you're really detail oriented. You can really take things to the next aesthetic level. Um, or maybe you think unexpectedly or unique, right? Which means we need a new idea. We need to approach this in a new way that um, hasn't been done before, a creative solution, um, a creative way to create this product or creative um, logo design, or maybe a new innovative app um, or a way of um, kind of a, a new way to uh, offer a service, right? Any of these things on a design team can be useful. And you might have one of these skills, you might have multiple versions of these skills, or you might collaborate on a team where you're using skills from across um, the team to work on a project together. So really quickly, I do wanna kind of launch a poll real quick to kind of see what overall y'all had, um, you know, overall what kind of creativity we have on the call today. So I'm actually gonna launch a poll one more, one second. Okay, so I'd love to know out of those different categories you see on the screen, like what kind of creativity was mostly shown in your circles? So when you drew, what kind of category would you mostly put yourself in based off that activity? Okay, so ooh, interesting mix here. Okay, I'll share the results in one second. It looks like most people are almost done answering. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. So, okay, cool, we got 20 people. End the poll now, I'm gonna share it. Awesome. So as you can see, a super diverse group on the call today, uh, are almost split, almost evenly. So that's really exciting actually to see because again, coming up with more inclusive designs, more innovative designs, more exciting designs, whether it's a product, website, app, service, you want different types of creatives on the call, right? You want different types of creatives in the room. You want different types of folks with different backgrounds in the room so that they all can uh, bring those particular skill sets in the design phase. Right? So that's really cool to see that actually tonight, we actually have a pretty great mix of collaborative creative skills. So if y'all are working together on a particular design project or brief, you actually probably could come up and really tag team and make some really inclusive and interesting designs. So that's really exciting to see. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing that actually. And now we're gonna kind of move it into the next phase, thinking about the creative design prompt. And as you're thinking about, okay, this is kind of how my mind works as a creative. I know what kind of things I like to do to showcase my creativity. How could I potentially use that in this creative design prompt challenge that UT is asking me to do when I'm applying to design. So let me go ahead and move forward. Uh, but I'm gonna pause really quick, check the chat just to see, I need sometimes these visual cues to see if we had questions. Um, cool, Ashley said she was open and flexible, but can't take the poll, love it. Um, let's see, okay, no questions yet. That's totally cool. We're gonna have Q and A at the end, but drop questions in the chat if you need them or if you need any clarifications. So let's go ahead and move forward. So, Remember how I mentioned the creative design prompt, right? That's something you're going to do if you're applying to the BA or BFA in design major um, as a freshman or as a transfer student. In addition to your creative work or your final work or project, you're also gonna do your behind the scenes video essay. So in the next couple slides, excuse me, we're gonna talk about how you might go about showcasing your behind the scenes when you're creating your video. Um, so again, in the design process, the behind the scenes is as equally important as the final product. I just can't stress that enough. When you're creating your work for this submission, definitely don't feel that it's all about your final project. It also is what you did during that process to create it. And you're going to want to document that to be able to use that in your behind the scenes video essay. So again, we see both of them as equally important when you're submitting that creative design prompt. So I'm going to show you come up with some examples, not of past creative design prompt submissions, but over the summer, SDCT, the School of Design and Creative Tech, typically brings in design, high school students that are studying in our graphic design program um, for a camp. Um, and I'll show you kind of some examples of how these students went about show, uh, documenting their process for a particular design problem they were trying to solve. So basically their task, let me jump back real quick. Their task um, was, um, their kind of open-ended problem that they were given was design an app that teachers and students can use to coordinate their schedules and to-do lists. So the, the audience is students and teachers, how do they go about getting on the same page as far as calendars, assignments, managing their schedules, um, and basically staying on top of what they need to do. So that's kind of their audience. That was kind of the design brief and the problem. 
as you can see in these photos, some of the early brainstorming phase the students did were really just all text, nothing visual at this point, just writing down ideas, writing down different ways that they could go about um, helping somebody with their time management. They realized that, okay, this app would help solve time management issues. So they wrote down different ways of doing it. Implement a calendar, maybe use an alarm system, all these different types of solutions that potentially an app could have. So again, at this early stage, they weren't creating anything. They weren't designing any designs, weren't creating any visual assets yet. It was just kind of a research phase, right? Brainstorming. And then they kind of mapped out their different um, ideas and put them in different categories, kind of understanding who their audience was, um, what the different features might look like, what problems those features of this app would solve. Um, again, these are steps that a lot of designers do take um, when they're working on a project to understand what they're designing for and who they're designing for and what problem they're trying to solve with the product they're creating. Um, so again, again, no visual uh, uh, stuff at this moment, really, it's just information, um, kind of categorizing information and doing that little bit of a research phase on the design side. Then the next step they did was, okay, they're going to create this app, right? We know the product's going to be an app. They started storyboarding. So maybe like, how does someone use this app? How is it going to make a difference in their lives? Why is it solving a problem for them? Why would they want to use it? Um, so in this case, really low fidelity sketches. These students are just kind of saying, this is how someone might use the app that we're creating. They're running into this problem. Then they use the app, are able to use this feature, solves their problem, right? Kind of conveying why um, their product is useful. Again, pretty low uh, visual skills right now. It's just kind of conveying information um, and, your, um, and your product. And then they kind of moved into the next phase, right? App design. Think about designing it, a layout of an app or the usability of an app. Again, they're not even using digital technology yet. They're just using pen and paper and sketching out what actual screens um, and um, wireframes would look like uh, each, at each phase of the app. So when someone clicks on this button, it'll take them to this screen. When they click on this button, it'll take them to this screen. And this is what they'll do on this screen. All these wireframes are actually steps that a lot of interaction designers and app designers and website designers use to convey before they even start designing what they're going to do. Um, it's also a really easy thing to showcase. And if you want to change up an idea, super easy, right? Because you can just scratch it out, draw up a new one. Um, so again, this just kind of shows you some of the behind the scenes that these students did uh, when they were designing their app um, for this particular um, assignment. Again, here's another um, kind of sketch of some wireframes. It's a little bit more refined, but again, still just pen and paper and visual. So with that, I just like to tell you, with your behind the scenes process, it doesn't always have to just be the final product. It also wants to be maybe early brainstorm ideas. What, we, what, was, what was your thinking behind it? What were the earlier versions? Um, how did you make the decisions you did? Whether it was the look of it, whether it was what was included, how you use it. Um, any of these things can be relevant, right? So with that, we do have a couple tips when you go about creating for this creative design prompt. Once you start creating whatever project you're gonna submit, right? Document everything. So you take photos of your early sketches, um, take videos if you're actually creating something with your hands or maybe doing something online, right? Take video of this, take as much content as you can because you never know what you might be able to use in your behind the scenes video when you're putting that together, right? To tell the story of your design. We actually have a design admissions video on our website, and I'll drop a link to it as well. Um, but basically, the design admissions video is kind of a six-minute overview of the creative design prompt. A lot of the information is stuff we talked about today, but watch that if it helps refresh kind of um, how you go about uh, submitting your creative design prompts. And this is another tip that we give students when you're thinking about how to create for your design prompts is try to limit the amount of time you actually spend on it. And I know that sounds a little odd, um, but what we mean by that is that we don't want you to spend like months and months on this project before the deadline. It doesn't need to be um, a huge project or this huge thing. It can be a simple idea. It could be a simple thing that you explored. You just want to think about, so I would always recommend limiting the amount of time you spend on it. We recommend maybe no more than six to eight hours. I know that sounds like a very little amount of time. Obviously you can spend as long as or as little as you want, but the goal here is to not overwhelm you. Like we just kind of want to see your creativity in a way that you want to showcase yourself as a creative with what you create. So don't try to overthink it. Also, don't try to um, stress yourself out because there's also other applications you're submitting and other work that you're doing. So just wanted to keep that in mind. And Ashley did a, a did me a solid and dropped the video. If you want to watch the design emissions video, it's linked right there. Also, again, use your submission as a way to get for us to get to know you, how you think, and what you like making. Again, you kind of figured out how you, your mind works as a creative. You also see how useful that can be on a design, on a design team. And you also thought about ways that you like to showcase creativity. So start making lists, try to, try, start trying to think about how you want to go about creating for this design prompt based off the theme that you choose. And make sure to pay attention to all the little details like 
the file types that we accept, the upload sizes, it's all on our website. I'll drop a link in a second. Um, but um, that goes through all of our file types, upload sizes, the portal where you actually submit your creative design prompt as a freshman for the deadline. So just make sure that you're paying attention to uploading and how you're actually submitting your files to make sure it's all good. All right, let me, okay. And now it's basically the end of our workshop, but I'm gonna open it up for Q&A. Um, let me see what time it is. I wanna see how much time we have left for Q&A. Okay, about 20 minutes, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, I would like to open it up for questions. It could be about the creative design prompt. It could be about our design program, it could be about any of these things that we talked about today. Uh, so I did wanna open it up for questions. Feel free to unmute yourself um, or drop them in the chat. Okay, so Emma has a great question. So are you essentially making a proof of concept to answer the design prompt or is the prompt based around something that can be finalized with any medium? Um, Emma, that's a great question. Basically what I would say to that is the prompt, right, is just a kind of a, a creative inspiration, right? There's a list of different themes uh, that you can select from. You'll choose one and then you'll create a new piece of work or project that conveys that theme that you chose. It can be in any medium. So in that way, right, the theme uh, that you select is kind of your starting off point, like, and there's a couple different ones that we list, anything from comments about the past, dazzle and delight the senses, speculate about the future, a call to action, um, guide or give instructions, right? Those are the different theme um, ideas we give you. You choose one. Um, and then again, you kind of take that as like your inspiration and you go to create a new piece of work or project that kind of conveys that message. Um, again, can be in any medium and your behind the scenes video is basically to convey, yeah, how did you go about creating that? Why did you create what you did? How did you go about achieving that theme? Uh, and those kind of questions and also just your process. So hopefully that kind of um, help answers your question, but please um, feel free to unmute yourself or drop a question in the chat if you have a follow-up about that, Emma. Anna, once admitted, could you switch majors from the BA to the BFA or vice versa if you change your mind? Yeah, great question. So actually you will choose whether you're gonna come in as a BA or BFA design major. So you do make that selection now, but you actually can switch between the tracks, especially in your first few semesters. So if you realize you come in as a BFA student, Maybe you're here for two semesters and you realize, oh, actually, I want a double major and I kind of want to free up some time in my schedule. So I think I want to switch to the BA uh, track. You can just work with your advisor on that. And that, that switch is usually pretty simple. It's just talking with your advisor. They'll talk through about why you're doing that. And then they'll be able to make that switch for, switch for you. Uh, the really nice thing is it's really easy to do in your first three semesters because you're taking the exact same design classes, whether you're a BA or a BFA student. So you do have that flexibility to switch um, if that does come up. Um, but if you know going in that you want the flexibility of a BA, you can choose that um, as early as being a freshman. Uh, Rain said, so when you think about UT in general, how would you go about the scholarships? How would you apply? Are there scholarships that I can look at for design? Great question, Rain. So the way scholarships work at UT, there's a couple different levels. So simply by you submitting your freshman or transfer application, you will be considered for general university scholarships just by your application. So there's no extra step there. Um, in addition, we do have a few fine arts specific scholarships uh, that you also don't have to submit an extra um, uh, application for. You're gonna be reviewed for those by your application and your creative submissions. So again, all that's gonna be looked at based off your application. Um, UT does have a variety of different financial aid and scholarship programs that you'll be considered for based off of your financial need, um, as well as your background when you're applying. Um, I don't know if it, how many of y'all know, but UT does have the Texas Advanced Commitment, which basically means um, if you submit your financial aid information, the FAFSA or the TASFA, you're accepted to UT and you're a resident of Texas and you qualify, um, you can also find it on the website. Um, basically, if your family makes $65,000 or less, you will be guaranteed full tuition and fee coverage in your grants and scholarship awarding. Um, if you have $125,000 or less family background, you'll be guaranteed partial tuition, tuition coverage. You don't even have to apply for that. That's automatically going to be considered based off your financial aid information that you submit. So that's really nice. So it just, I always tell students, wait till you get your financial aid package to see how much money you're getting. Um, and my last thing that I will say on scholarships um, is that uh, UT's alumni network, Texas X's, um, actually has their own alumni scholarships that they award for a variety of different reasons. They have their own scholarship application. You can actually Google that. It's called, if you type in Texas X's alumni scholarships, you'll be able to actually see the Texas X's scholarship application. And you can actually even submit that um, in addition to your UT application to be considered for more scholarships that they sponsor. Um, so I would recommend checking out those resources for sure. Jez, is the design program competitive hard to get into? 
So, you know, it really does vary. Um, I would say getting into UT in general can be pretty competitive, right? Um, I would say the design program, especially in the last uh, year or so, has gotten more and more applications. Um, so in that way, um, you know, we do have a pretty small program. Last year, we had about 50 incoming freshmen. So it's a pretty small class size. That being said, um, we do look at your application holistically, which really means we're going to look at every single aspect of your application in addition to your creative submissions. So definitely don't feel like, um, you know, oh, if I don't have this specific GPA or maybe, um, you know, I feel like this other section of my application is lacking, uh, don't sell yourself short. Um, you can give context to your situation and also your strengths and what you're bringing to the program. Um, and we're going to look at all those kind of things when we make decisions on who's admitted. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, you know, not everybody that um, that would that we love to have in our program can be admitted just based off the size that we have. But again, we do look at you holistically at UT. So again, try to really um, showcase all your creative skills and talents and passions and experiences within each part of your application when applying to UT. In addition to this creative design prompt, Caroline, just making sure I have this right, we do not need to do the design prompt if you're applying to arts and entertainment technologies. Caroline, I love that question. So yes, this happens a lot. You'll constantly, or not, you'll, this happens a lot. A lot of students sometimes get confused um, if they're applying to arts and entertainment technologies or design and what the requirement is. So like I said, if you're applying specifically to the BA or BFA design major, you will do this creative design prompt submission. Um, if you're applying to arts and entertainment technologies, you will not. There's no creative submission or portfolio requirement for the arts and entertainment technologies major. Uh, it'd be the same as if you were applying to maybe computer science or engineering. They just have the general UT application, right? So if you're applying to arts and entertainment technologies or AET, you will not do this submission, but we do encourage you within your UT application materials to really highlight your experience and skills that relate to our arts and entertainment technologies program in your application. It'd be just the same as if you were applying to computer science, right? And they want to see like your interest in computer science within your application. Um, that's the same for arts and entertainment technologies. We're going to want to see your fit and interest for that program seen within your application. Um, but if you're applying to the BA or BFA in design, you will do this creative design prompt submission that we just mentioned today in the workshop. That's why this is more focused for students who do want to major in the BA, BFA design. And Caroline, I think you're already registered, but definitely make sure you register for tomorrow's workshop uh, inside AET, Exploring Themed Entertainment Design, because that will be a little bit more about arts and entertainment technologies and a great place to ask more questions about that major also. So um, I would recommend signing up for that if you can. Let's see, so many questions. Okay, I'm going to try to catch up with these. Uh, Nassim, um, because a lot of approaches common about the present, create a call to action, et cetera, are very broad, how do you recommend that we narrow our submission down to just one? Great, uh, great question, Nassim. So again, you know, I would just say choose the one that you think best kind of excites you as far as what you're going to create, right? Um, if you're really excited about the idea of creating a call to action, um, you want to create something that, you know, drives an action, uh, go for that. If you like the idea of commenting about something to do with the past, something historical, something about that happened long ago, go for that. It's really just serving as um, one approach to how you're going to design. So I would say choose one and kind of start start that as your jumping off point, right? Um, and, and in reality, um, your design might incorporate more than one approach, but just choose one that's gonna be kind of your central starting off point that you're gonna focus in on in your submission. Um, so again, in theory, you know, you could create something that dazzles and delights the senses, but also is a call to action, right? Um, and you can mention that in your application, but I would just, uh, it's more of the theme selection is more of a jumping off point. To kind of start off, okay, like this is my this is my mindset going in to what I'm going to create is based off this theme and this goal. So that's kind of if that helps you a little bit in just choosing one. And I wouldn't stress too much about the the choosing of the theme. Again, it's not that's not supposed to be the most stressful part uh, of the creative design prompt. Hey Zeus, you mentioned do you have to have prior knowledge of digital software to take graphic design courses? Great question. Um, so kind of like I said, um, we are looking for all types of creative students for our BA, BFA design program. Um, we know some students might be coming into the program already with digital design skills. That's awesome. Definitely, you can showcase that and talk about that in your application. But if you don't have digital design skills, that's OK, too. Kind of how like I just showcased in some of these um, behind the scenes images, um, like you can see. Again, these high school students were just kind of showcasing how they'd go about creating something graphically, but just using pen and paper, right? So again, you might not have digital design skills just yet, but you might have creative skills and you can showcase what you would do once you learn those digital design skills like Adobe and different softwares in that way. So um, that's the, to, the, to, the, to that end, do you need to know how to use every single Adobe software to apply to our program? No. 
Uh, it's more about showcasing your creativity and how you've explored design so far in your high school or college journey. So that's what I would say to that question. Don't um, think that you necessarily need to have all these skills already. Um, the freshman design experience also gives you exposure to learning some of these softwares and these different areas of design. So that's kind of what the freshman experience is supposed to look like when you come into the program. Thanks, James, for dropping the Texas Excess alumni link. All right, Rain, any recommendations for a junior in high school to start working on or to start working on? Uh, I forgot to ask last year when I was a sophomore. Okay, cool. Love that. Oh, yeah, I remember. I think I remember your name, Rain. I think I remember you actually attending some of these events. Um, that's wild. Um, so uh, if you're a junior, right, what I would say is don't worry about doing the creative design prompt now, right? Um, that's something you should really wait for until you're a senior applying mostly because sometimes um, we do alter the prompt year to year. The spirit of the prompt stays the same, but we might actually change the specific um, prompt uh, mechanics or maybe the requirements each year over the summer for the next year. We did that this year. So I would say, Rain, definitely don't jump ahead there, but you could still explore what, what are things going on at your high school that relates to art, creativity, uh, design, um, and any of those mediums or exploring your creativity by either taking classes, getting involved in student orgs, or exploring the field of design on your own, even online, um, I'd recommend doing those things. That's a good way to kind of keep exploring if you're interested in this program um, or design in general. And also start looking up what different designers do and see what area of design you're most interested in, because that could also help kind of tailor your focus when you're applying to programs and for you to articulate what you want to do in a design program. So that would be my recommendations. Also stay in contact with us, come to these events uh, like you've already been doing to just kind of make sure uh, you can get all the information you can as you're applying to design programs to find the one that's the best fit for you. Sarah, do we have to be accepted to UT first before you look at our creative design prompt submissions? Actually, no. So Sarah, um, um, you need to submit your creative design prompt submission um, before the December 1st deadline, if you're applying as a freshman, to be considered for this major at UT. Um, so that if you have design as your first choice major, you're definitely going to want to make sure to submit your creative design prompt before the deadline so that your application will be fully complete and be reviewed by our faculty. Um, so um, again, if you're an automatically admissible student, you might find out that you've been admitted to UT because you're an auto admit, but you still might not find out that you've been admitted to your first choice major. So if that's the case for you, obviously you might find out you've been admitted to UT before you find out you're admitted to design, but most students are going to find out that they've been admitted to design and UT at the same time. That review is going to take place, and then we're going to release our admissions decisions for our design students, um, and you'll find out that you've been accepted to the design program at UT the same time you get your acceptance to UT. So that's hopefully answers that question. Sarah, is double major possible between the AET and design program or not because one is science and one is arts? Great question. Um, the, we only started allowing double majors for arts and entertainment technologies about a year and a half ago. So um, I do know students have this interest and it's definitely a possibility. I would say the only thing that might make it a little difficult is that um, both programs are very project-based. So it could be kind of a, some heavy course loads if you're doing both. That being said, um, a lot of times you can actually use certain arts and entertainment technology course requirements and design course requirements um, and potentially get credit for both um, uh, for, for the same class, especially in the upper level years. So it's definitely possible. I would just say make sure you choose which major you want to come into first, right? Like as a freshman or a transfer student, what major am I applying to? Is it design or is it AET? And then after your first semester or so, start exploring whether or not you want to double major in that other major. And if so, there's actually a process and an application you'll submit to add that as a second major. Um, it's definitely possible to doable. That's something you just want to chat with your advisor when you first come in, see how the workload is in your first major. And then you can reach out to me actually, uh, once you're a current student, if you're interested in double majoring, and I can tell you about the application process and what that looks like. So it's definitely a possibility. Is there a link for the workshop tomorrow? Uh, Ashley, you already got it. Love that. Um, so yeah, click on that and make sure to click Inside AET, Intro to Themed Entertainment Design. Really, really cool workshop happening tomorrow, more oriented around arts and entertainment tech. Chloe, so what is the transfer deadline? So good point. I'm actually going to showcase um, this screen really quick. So if you're applying for fall 2022, keep in mind we only accept new students every fall semester. Um, so if you're applying as a freshman this year or this coming year for fall 2022, that deadline is December 1st. So that's coming up in a little less than two months. Uh, definitely make sure that you get your um, UT application in complete and also the creative design prompt uh, complete and submitted as well. 
Um, if you're a transfer applying for fall 2022, you have through March 1st to complete your transfer application to UT and also your creative design prompt submissions and design work samples as a transfer. So you have a little bit longer if you're a transfer student, you have through March 1st. Lauren, you had to leave early, but love that you really enjoyed it. Awesome. Nassim, uh, you like to do traditional art and video editing. I'm planning to use more traditional mediums for the design prompt submission. Would using my experience in video editing and the behind the scenes video help my application at all? Or would you recommend keeping that aspect more simple? Nassim, great question. So um, with that, I always recommend students, if you want to showcase and flex your skills and what you're good at in your creative design, creative design prompt submission, do that. So even if you're doing something more traditional as far as the medium for your final work, but you have a lot of great video editing skills and you want to showcase them in your creative design prompt uh, behind the scenes submission, you can do that too. You don't have to keep it simple. Um, that being said, for anybody who's not a video editor on the call, don't feel like you need to have a fancy video. That is not the point of the video submission. It's more of you just showcasing your process and telling that story of your work. But again, if you have those video editing, editing skills, why not showcase them um, when you're putting together your video, right? Um, so that's my answer to that. If you have those skills and you want to go for it, go for it. But also don't worry if you're not a video editor, you don't need to have like um, a perfect video. You can use iMovie, you can use your phone camera, you can make a TikTok and download that, right? And, and do your behind the scenes that way and submit the, the video file. You know, whatever way works for you to convey your message in, in a video, that's um, what we would suggest doing. Sarah, if you're an out-of-state resident, how can you apply for paid tuition scholarship after your freshman year or established residency in Texas? So let me see if anybody answered that question. Maybe not. So Sarah, um, as far as establishing res residency in Texas, there are a couple different steps you can do about um, uh, establishing residency. Um, I'm actually going to drop you a link to the Texas residency website so you can see all that information and what it looks like. You can even actually email the residency office if you have specific questions about how to go about declaring residency here at Texas. Um, but let me just drop that in the chat for you. Um, but um, just know as an out-of-state student, sometimes there might be a select number um, of out-of-state tuition waivers that the College of Fine Arts um, offers students who are accepting to the program. Um, you're going to be reviewed for that opportunity also alongside scholarships. Um, again, there are only a handful of them um, across fine arts, but um, we have been able to award that to uh, a select out-of-state student or two in the past for design. So you also will be considered for that uh, based off your um, application. Uh, but I would definitely recommend checking out that website if you want to go about how to con uh, become a Texas resident uh, if you do move to Austin and attend UT. So hopefully that's helpful there. Uh, and you can actually apply for scholarships every year as a continuing student. There's a continuing student application um, that's open every year um, for continuing students. And so you could potentially get scholarships that way too. When doing anything with UT, does it make it easier to show what you have done and what you love to do, like some photos of art or designs in your opinion? Um, Rain, I mean, what I would say in general is like we want to see your personality and your creative interests and skills in this creative design prompt and also when you talk about it in your application. So um, definitely you want to showcase your personality and what you like to do and what you like to create because um, that can also inform how you'll be as a designer. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. I know we only have two minutes left, so want to make sure that we kind of wrap things up. Oh yeah, also tomorrow is my birthday. So if you do want to attend the Inside AET workshop, I'll be there. Uh, you can wish me happy birthday. And also thanks for all the birthday wishes so early. That's amazing. Um, love that. Okay, cool. So again, on this screen that you can see here, more events are happening tomorrow for Longhorn Creative's virtual open house. I'll show you them right now. At five o'clock, there's a musician's guide to an audition. To an audition. So if you want to are interested in the music school, you'll definitely want to attend that. Inside AET Exploring Themed Entertainment Design is happening at six o'clock tomorrow. I'll be there. Also, our arts and entertainment faculty, MK Haley, will be there. It'll be a really cool workshop because MK Haley has had over 20 years working in Disney Imagineering, which is a really cool industry, right? So she's going to talk about themed entertainment as a whole career industry and also showcase some student work and examples of class projects that she's taught here in arts and entertainment technologies related to themed entertainment. So if that's a new field for you and you want to hear more about it, and how you can get into that in arts and entertainment technologies, definitely attend that one tomorrow. And then there's one for the Department of Art and Art History at seven o'clock tomorrow called The Art of the Still Life, which is a little bit about observational drawing and how you use that in your portfolio. Keep in mind for people on the call, 
if you end up applying to the art and art and art history de uh, department, they do have different portfolio requirements than design. So just keep that in mind. You'll want to check out that workshop at seven tomorrow to find out a little bit more about that. If you end up applying to the um, art and art history program, it is a little, it is separate um, and they do have different requirements for their portfolio. So make sure you know that. Um, and otherwise we were going to repeat two more starting to think and make like a designer workshops happening on October 25th from six to seven and November 9th from six to seven. It'll be pretty similar to what y'all did today, but I'm going to try to switch it up. And maybe there also might be current students or faculty on the call as well. So if you want to join in and some of those future workshops, uh, to ask more questions and hopefully learn some more new stuff, feel free, but it's mostly going to be a repeat for anybody who couldn't make it tonight as you're working on your applications. Uh, remember the deadlines coming up. If you have questions, email me. My email address is right there. I'm happy to set up a Zoom call with you. Happy to talk one-on-one -on -one about um, what questions you have and definitely follow us on Instagram. You can follow the School Design and Creative Tech at UTSDCT. You can also follow the College of Fine Arts Admissions Instagram at UT underscore COFA admissions. Hopefully Instagram's working right now. I know yesterday Facebook and Instagram was down for like five hours. So I'm hoping it all works. Otherwise, I think that is time, everybody. So exactly at six o'clock, I think this is the first time I've ended on time. This is amazing. Uh, it was really great to interact with y'all. I'm glad y'all enjoyed it. Um, I really hope to hear from y'all soon. I'm excited to see your creative design prompt submissions when you're submitting your application. And please email us, reach out to us if you have questions. We are here to help answer them and put you in the right direction if you need any um, assistance when you're applying to UT um, or finding out more about our programs. So hook them. Have a good night, everybody, and um, I'll see you all tomorrow if you're coming to the AET workshop.